Even though it's Sunday, and of course the Sunday liturgy supersedes the saint of the day, October 4th is the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, who is probably the most famous, popular, and beloved saint in the history of the Catholic Church. Um, you see his statue in bird baths, in fields, in gardens. He's the patron saint of nature and ecology and animals. Certainly one of the most popular saints who's chosen as confirmation name by many of our young people. When I ask them why they chose him, they'll often say because of his love for nature or animals, which is a reflection of their own love for nature and animals. It's easy, and in some revisionist history, um, people have portrayed Francis as kind of this Catholic hippie, as um, kind of this just nature-loving, naturalist man um, who, who shows us the integration of all things. But that doesn't get to the heart of it. To really understand Francis, we have to understand his deep, devoted love to the crucified Christ. So once his heart had been captured by Jesus, Francis realized that it was through the cross that we come to conversion, that we experience mercy, and that we become completely identified with Jesus. It explains his radical embrace of poverty. It explains his renunciation of all possessions and his departure from the comforts of his parents' home to going to live with lepers outside of Assisi. Um, people were puzzled by him. He had been the life of the party, this um, chivalrous young man, wildly popular among his friends who dreamed of knighthood and deeds of daring. Is wounded in a campaign of um, fighting against Perugia, which was a rival city-state at the time. Spends some time in prison, gets released, has a long convalescence in bed in his parents' house. And it was in that time of deep suffering that he changes. And so there's all these legendary stories of Francis. Francis kissing a leper and the leper turning into Christ. Francis hearing the voice of Christ from the cross of this broken down chapel. Francis rebuild my church. Francis going to the Sultan in the Holy Land, um, seeking to um, proclaim Christ to him and to end uh, the battles and the wars going on at the time. Francis preaching to the birds. Now Francis stripping all his clothes off in the town square and giving them back to his father. Francis receiving the stigmata. Francis walking to Rome to uh, get permission from the Holy Father, Pope Innocent III, for his new rule. Francis never intended to found a religious order. He had just fallen in love with God and wanted to give witness to his faith. But so many people were moved and inspired by his example. It spread throughout the whole church. So Francis didn't wait for people to come to church, he went to them. He lived essentially outside. And in the vast world of nature, he came to realize that everything that God had created um, was an expression of, of God's beauty, truth, and goodness. That's why he could love animals and nature and all of creation, not because of itself, but because God's fingerprints were all over it. So at the end of his life, He's become blind. He can no longer see anything. And yet it was out of that darkness that he wrote his beautiful Canticle of the Sun, which is a proclamation of praise to God for all of the gifts of nature that the Lord has created. Your brother sun, sister moon, brother fire, sister water, um, sister death even. He dies at the age of 42 and uh, is almost immediately canonized. But we see in him uh, perhaps one of the most perfect examples of a soul that has been completely transformed by Christ. So we honor Francis of Assisi most when we live a life of detachment, of joy, of simplicity, of humility, focused on Christ crucified and risen, knowing him as our supreme good, and going through the world and singing our hymn of praise to our Heavenly Father, St. Francis of Assisi, pray for us.